how was I drawn to law? I can't really say the exact time or an exact um, event in my life that led me to, to law. But as far as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I've, in, my mom will tell you that in grade four, I did an oral on what I want to be when I grow up and it was an attorney or a lawyer at the time. Um, I've watched Ali McBeal, the, the practice, Boston Legal growing up and I always had this idea that I would become an attorney. Um, from, from there, yeah, that's what drew me to law. Memorable cases? Um, what immediately pops into my head is uh, the time that I represented the convicted serial killer Moses Itole. He is currently serving a sentence of over 2,500 years at Mangong Maximum Security in Bloemfontein. And he was sentenced sometime in the 90s already. And he was charged with uh, an offence in prison. That was in 2015. Um, so I had to consult with him. I was still working at Legal Aid. Before I went to consult with him, I hyped myself up. I watched all the YouTube videos about him and the allegations of how he killed people and, and what happened. And I went to go and consult with him and I thought I was calm and he's just a client. We at the maximum security prison, I mean, nothing can happen there. And when I got back to the car and I put my hand on the steering wheel, my hands were shaking so much that I couldn't drive. Um, but all in all, uh, he was a very intelligent and articulate client. He gave me instructions. We made representations to the state and the matter against him was withdrawn. But um, yeah, that really sticks in my mind when you say uh, like a, a memorable case that I've done. I'm proud of having been asked to act as a magistrate at the young age of 31. Uh, I was admitted as an attorney already at the age of 23, so I did have a lot of um, years behind me at that stage already. But I did find that I was the youngest in the Free State at 31, and it was an honor. Um, that's a memorable achievement of mine. But looking at some other things, um, I've passed the conveyancing exam without ever having worked in a conveyancing firm and the notary exam. These exams, the pass rate is like 4.7% for conveyancing the last I checked. So notary exam is fairly similar, it's very hard. You must remember that people that are writing conveyancing and notary exams are already admitted as attorneys. It's not anyone that can go and, go and write those exams. So these people that are already attorneys go and write these exams and they still failing by the boatload. So I'm very proud of the fact that I'm an attorney, a conveyancer and a notary. Um, I'm also very proud of the fact that in 2017, I was chosen to go on the judicial skills training. It's a selection course, they take 20 people uh, at that time per year. I think it's now twice a year and you get selected and <clears throat> once you completed that course, you're now eligible to become a judge of the High Court because you've completed the well, there's a lot of other requirements, but that's part of the training that you need to become a judge of the High Court. So I'm also very proud of that. Only a Kofsi knows the feeling. I think you're asking the right person. <laughs> I left uh, Kimberley after matric and I came to study at the University of the Free State. And I studied there. In my fourth year, I was hell-bent on becoming a prosecutor. There was a plan. Um, and I did a fourth year mock trial competition got to the semi-finals, I think University of Pretoria beat us, and Advocate Besaid Not, um, who was the head of the law clinic, approached me and said to, um, asked me to bring my CV and said I should come for an interview. Then started doing my, uh, I got the job, I did my articles at the university's law clinic. From there I got uh, admitted as an attorney the following year, and I was working in, uh, as a supervisor there, a junior supervisor uh, for the new candidate attorneys. Even though I left there, I went to go and work at Legal Aid for five years and I also opened my practice. In 2016, I was again approached by the law clinic to work as a supervisor there. And as a lecturer, I lectured criminal law for second years. I've lectured in the UFS Business Management School. This year, I moderated a master's subject in the law faculty. I've worked in the Directorate for Student Discipline and Mediation, um, where, we, where I prosecuted and I set as a chairperson for student disciplinary matters. Now I st I'm still on the panel, so I chair hearings now and then and when they need me. I'm also chairing um, hearings for human resources at the University of the Free State. So I've always had a relationship with the university since I left and started studying. And uh, only a Kofsi knows a feeling. For me, it's a feeling of belonging, a feeling of um, having a place that will continue developing you. I've got my master's degree also from the University of the Free State and 
right now as we're sitting here, like I said, I still do work for them on panels. I'm still associated with the university. I go and do talks for first year functions at the law faculty or anything to do with the law faculty. They'll come and ask me to give talks now and then. Um, so uh, the, it's a feeling of knowing that this institution wasn't only there for me to just study and, and get a degree. I can say that it's developed me to the person that I am today. Even now, I'll do maybe a matter or something like that for the university next month. I'll get paid and I'll learn something and I'll co continue developing through the university. And I hope to register for my doctorate soon as well.